So, I've been gone for a couple months, since like the summer, but I have a new project that I'm working on in Polycraft, and this project is collecting every single block. So first off, where am I going to do this? Well, I decided I was just going to clear out some land right here. I know my base probably looks different, or my land everywhere looks really different. Um, I will give you the grand tour of that probably sometime soon. So I got to work on making a building. I decided I was just going to use some pretty standard blocks. I was just going to use like stone bricks, wood, that sort of thing. And the main idea for the building is that there's just going to be one level above ground, which is going to contain all the overworld blocks. And then all the levels are going to be below that. Like the next one below it is probably going to be underground and then probably nether. It's probably just gonna be kind of in the order of progression. And as you can probably tell here, I'm making the overworld portion right now. So I decided I was just gonna use some green, white, and light blue concrete to sort of simulate grass and then the sky and then the clouds. And I'm going for a fairly simplistic design because I don't have a whole lot of space to work with, but I feel like it turns out pretty well. So now it was time to populate it with all of the overworld blocks. And I pre-planned out what blocks I was going to put where in this spreadsheet right here. So all I really had to do was collect all the blocks. Well, one down, 719 left to go. My first batch was oak and spruce wood items. So that included everything from the normal things that you'd imagine with wood like planks, logs, wood, stripped wood, leaves, to all the more obscure things like fences, fence gates, doors. Basically everything that you can craft out of only wood or sticks that are a block or like something you can place like I'm not doing like tools or armor or items or anything in this one I might put that in the museum that you may have seen in the very first clip next up birch and then all of the sand related items the next couple items were a couple translucent blocks so I had glass tinted glass glass pane and iron bars Glass, glass pane, and iron bars were easy enough, but I had no amethyst crystals, and I had no idea where to find them. I know I could go underground, but that would take forever. So someone told me there were some at Luxador, and I spent quite a while looking around for them. I couldn't find them, so I just decided I was just going to skip tinted glass until I could get my hands on some amethyst crystals. You are now witnessing me looking around for tall grass, dead bushes, and ferns because after the translucent block section, you may have noticed that next came a lot of plants. So the things that came next were ferns, large ferns, grass, tall grass, dead bush, and then a bunch of flowers. I had most of the flowers, but I don't keep stacks of tall grass, ferns, or dead bushes around, so I had to go and find some of those. And now it's time to put the next batch in, those being the translucent blocks and the flowers. And you might notice here that there are a couple of blank spots in the middle. And there are also two blank spots at the end, but you just can't see them because they blend in with the rest of the thing where I don't have any of the blocks placed there yet. Those two blocks that were missing were two flowers that I did not have. Those being the blue orchid and the lily of the valley. So I decided I was just going to fly down to a swamp and grab some blue orchids. And then because I didn't really fancy looking for however long it might be for a flower forest or wherever the heck Lily of the Valleys spawn in, I decided I was just going to check the marketplace for Lily of the Valleys. I didn't find any there, but I did find a shop that actually did sell amethysts. I didn't see it the first time because it wasn't on the first floor, but I decided to explore the second floor this time, and boom, 
there it was. So now I have all the amethyst blocks, including tinted glass. I still had to find that stupid flower though. And it wasn't just the lily of the valley either. I also had to find a rose bush and a peony. Those were probably going to be easier to find though because I've seen them around more than I have Lily of the Valley. And that proved to be true. It took me only about two minutes to find the rose bush. Four minutes to find the peony, but it took a significant amount of time more to find the lily of the valley. But I did eventually find it. There it is. And then my flower section was completed. The next batch of blocks was the final batch that was going to go on this side of the overworld floor. And it included some kind of miscellaneous stuff, such as ice, blue ice, packed ice, cactus, cocoa beans, farmland, dirt path. And I think this was actually the first time that I have ever used my cactus farm for something. I set this up maybe like a year ago and I haven't touched it since. But I think this is the first time that I'm ever going to use it. And it's probably going to be one of the last times I use it. Except for when I need green dye for the colorful section. So I started putting down the blocks I needed, beginning with the ice blocks. And then I thought, this ice is a little too close to the sea lantern. I don't know what light level ice melts at, so I moved it. I kind of flipped them around. So instead of ice, packed ice, blue ice, it was blue ice, packed ice, regular ice, because I knew blue ice and packed ice wouldn't melt at high light levels like ice would. Here's a little showcase of the entire side. I didn't show myself putting down the other blocks because they were things that weren't really that consequential, like cactus, which I just had to remember to leave space for, or rooted dirt, which was a little bit of work, but all I had to do was grow a moss tree in my basement. Uh, yeah, that's basically everything on this side. Starting off on the right side of the overworld section, the first two blocks I needed were podzol and grass block, which I just had sitting in my basement. And then we would start with the jungle wood section, which would just mirror the oak section, and the acacia, which would mirror the spruce. And then the dark oak, which would mirror the birch. And for dark oak, I needed dark oak leaves. So I just grew a dark oak tree in my land and then just chopped it down, which also gave me the amount of dark oak wood that I needed. So win-win. Where was this villager a couple days ago when I was trying to find ferns for the life of me? Man, are you guys good over there? I feel like you're starting to break the laws of physics. See how much red sand I have. Okay, I think it's time to go collect some red sand because I have three. So I boated on to a mesa that I knew was sort of nearby my house. It was only about a thousand, two thousand blocks away. While I was there, I also decided to collect some terracotta because I would need that for glazed terracotta, stained terracotta, and just plain old terracotta, which was supposed to be on the overworld floor eventually. Here are all the red sand blocks, I'm just putting them directly mirroring the sand blocks to achieve some sort of symmetry. Next up was all the mushroom blocks, which I did not have, so I just flew to a dark oak forest and decided to go get some. Next to those mushrooms and mycelium, you can see me doing other blocks. So 
The next group was bricks, and then all of the stone brick variations, which I had a lot of stone bricks lying around, and I really only needed vines, which I can kind of find wherever to make mossy stone bricks. Now, if you'll notice, this is the final group of overworld blocks that I needed, and there's a section that has to do with bees. I haven't set up a bee farm in my entire time on Polycraft because I hate bees. Just the way they work, I don't understand it, I don't like doing it, and now Polycraft is going to force my hand because I needed four honey related blocks. That was going to be a chore because first I even had to find a beehive. So I set out with my campfire my shears, and some zoibucks just in case I randomly ran into a shop that was selling bee parts. I had done it. I had found a bee and a beehive. It wasn't just the one beehive though. This area had, I think, four beehives. Perfect for breeding bees back at my base. Oh, there's three bees. There's oh, there's so many of them. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's five. Okay. Here is the completed overworld floor. Next stop was underground, which was probably going to be a lot harder than just trying to find some bees. Decorating the underground portion didn't go as well as decorating the above ground portion because I really didn't have many ideas for what to do here. I might eventually go back and change this, but for now it was just going to be whatever I dug out because that was kind of underground-ish, right? The first underground blocks were going to be granite, diorite, and andesite, as well as all of their alternate forms. I had to sacrifice some diorite from the holy diorite chest in order to make this polished diorite and diorite stairs and diorite wall and stuff, but hopefully it's not too big of a deal. This is so boring. Oh, got my exposed copper. Six down, ten to go. Here is all the copper. This took about two hours to fully oxidize. I don't know if I was doing it optimally, but I think I was. So, I hate copper so much right now. Last up on the left side was a couple random blocks as well as some of the deep slate. That's the left side done. The right side is gonna be a whole lot worse. After some relatively easy blocks, which was basically all the cobblestone variations, here is why the right side is going to be difficult. All of the ores, including the regular and deep slate varieties of each block. However, because this server was generated on 1.16, that meant that blocks such as diamond ore were not going to be as difficult to find because there was still the diamond ore from when the world didn't go down to negative 64. However, blocks such as deep slate emerald ore were still gonna be annoying. To save this video from being like six hours long, I'm going to spare you all of the mining footage and just show you I got all the blocks, including redstone, but redstone is going in a separate redstone category, not with all the other ores. This felt so exhilarating to get done because this is what I was anticipating was going to be the hardest part of this all blocks challenge and I had gotten it done. After that it was pretty much smooth sailing finding every block I needed. They were just a bunch of random underground related blocks aside from three. 
I had to travel thousands of blocks and I eventually found a lush cave to get the blocks I needed which were drip leaf and thankfully that lush cave ran directly into a dripstone cave because I needed dripstone and dripstone block as well. And then the underground section was completed. The next layer down was the nether layer. And this design was a little difficult to do, but I think I pulled it off all right. I wanted to sort of simulate the nether fog and kind of make the background fade out a little bit. So I used red and black stained glass, and I think it turned out all right. If you recall the chart from about 15 seconds ago, you would remember that the first blocks I needed were the crimson blocks. So I decided I was just going to go make a nether portal in my very interesting basement that definitely needed cleaned up, and I was going to go get the crimson. Unfortunately, I spawned in a warped forest, and it would be a long time before I could find a crimson. And then it was finally time to start with the nether section. After traveling about 3,000 blocks in the nether, we put the crimson stuff down. That was followed by nether brick, which I lost the footage for. A couple random blocks, like bone blocks and nether wart blocks and warp warts, and then blackstone. And thankfully, if you saw in the little compilation, I found a bastion on the way because that meant I could actually have gilded blackstone and wouldn't have to search for hours for it. And a respawn anchor because I forgot about that one. Next up was just all of the warped counterparts to the crimson blocks. And that was followed by a bunch of random nether blocks, like all the quartz variants, or shroom lights, or soul sand, all those sorts of things. And then there were four blocks that were going to be a bit difficult to get. A wither rose, I had ample wither skeleton skulls from when there was a shop. And then ancient debris, lodestone, and a netherite block especially. Now, I could buy ancient debris, but it was pretty expensive. Here's me getting the wither rose and the nether star, which I would eventually use for the beacon. It was pretty easy. I've killed several withers on this server before. You just have to tunnel down to the middle of nowhere and just kill it. I just put a chicken down there. Um, and then here are the final nether blocks. Just kidding, I forgot nether sprouts. The end floor was really easy. There were only 14 blocks in it, and I just went on an end city raid with the help of Lux and gathered them all really easily. As for the dragon head and the dragon egg, I just took the dragon head from my basement and I had a dragon egg in my end chest, which I really didn't want to part with, but oh well. This is more important than it just sitting in my end chest. Then I had to deviate from the order of progression because, you know, there isn't really much anything after the end. So the next section was the colorful block section. And I realized that this room that I built kind of looks like a insane asylum with all the white. I mean, it looks less like an insane asylum with my unsmooth lighting on, but it's still a little weird. I kind of wanted to make it feel like a canvas that I was going to paint a bunch of color on. To save you all the trouble of me getting every single die, for every single one of these blocks, I'm just gonna show you me putting it all in there because it's not really that interesting. None of these blocks I really needed help with. The shulker boxes, I just bought 64 shulker shells from a shopkeeper earlier. I don't know if you would have seen it. I don't know if I left it in the footage. But while I was actually recording for, I think, the amethyst part, I bought the 64 shulker shells, so that wasn't really that difficult.
what the heck? These things are called daylight detectors. The next section was the redstone section. All of this section went pretty smoothly. I had pretty much every single redstone component you could ever dream of just sitting in my basement because I have a section of my basement dedicated to redstone things. The only problem was TNT because the server won't let me place a block of TNT. I didn't do it in this recording, but I did eventually just put TNT in an item frame to circumvent that. After that was the ocean section, which involved me getting all of the coral blocks, which ordinarily would be a bit of a problem. However, as you may know, I own a coral shop on this server, which meant I had a place that I went for all of my coral needs. So I just had to go back there and harvest some more coral and any remaining coral I could just put back into the shop, which I was eventually gonna move the shop because Amaji Mark is pretty much dead at this point. I figured out that at least with the coral blocks, in order to keep them alive, they only need to have water on one of their block faces. So I just put water behind them and then just put the coral in front. And then for the coral fans and just coral itself, I just waterlogged them. None of the rest of the ocean blocks were anything that difficult to get. I already had things like sea pickles and seagrass from when I went on that coral mining session. I had turtle eggs just because they were one of the random things I had laying around my house. Really the only difficult thing was a conduit, but I just bought a conduit with Aquarion materials. So the ocean part was finished, and now there was one section remaining. This last section was originally the other and achievement based section. But I realized that only six of the blocks in this section were actually achievement blocks. So I made the majority of this into the furniture section and put the six achievement blocks in the back area. And for the design, I went for a sort of house look, it kind of had those like wooden beams. And then for the back, I just made it look like a treasure room. And none of these blocks were really that difficult to get. I had essentially all of them lying around. The only difficult part was actually getting the materials for the treasure room. And with that, we were done. Here's some footage of me walking through every single floor. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.